Hello, my name is Becky Norwood with Spotlight Publishing House, and this is my honor to introduce you to Ike Fontaine. He has GetFutureMedia.com, and his big, big focus is client acquisition through podcasting. We know that most of our uh, the authors that I work with, um, the reason that I've teamed up with collaborating with Ike is because of the wonderful tool set that he has to help authors take that book who are, that they're using as a tool for business growth and get the attention that they need to really get their message out to the world. So Ike, welcome to our, our podcast today. Um, introduce yourself, tell us a little of your background and how all of this came to be. <laughs> totally. Thanks for having me. Um, hello, and uh, my name is Ike. Uh, I run an agency called Future Media. Um, as Becky was saying, we specialize in client acquisition through podcasting. I think the the unique qualifier that we do is that you know we do completely done for you uh, podcasts for our clients. But what we do is we marry that with creative outreach strategies that can funnel new prospect interest, uh, authority growth. Um, and sales through running an effective podcast funnel, let's say. So, you know, we run a, you run a podcast um, and we can use ways of getting in front of new audiences, um, expanding not only the the reach, but also kind of the, say the, uh, the prospect interest or the prospect drive into one's business. Um, authors are incredibly well positioned in the world um, to kind of take advantage of this ecosystem. Um, not only are they on the thought authority journey, uh, but they are sitting there with the treasure trove of content. Um, and I think, you know, podcasting is a, a very, very unique um, situation and opportunity for them. Uh, yeah, that's my, that's my high level. <laughs> so how did, how did this journey begin from you, for you? Um, I got my start uh, basically working online um, 10 years ago or so, uh, probably a little bit more actually than that. Uh, and when I first started uh, working online, working online or being like an online entrepreneur or stuff like that wasn't very cool. It was mm -hmm. it was definitely not a community or like the working online community wasn't very strong. It's like definitely a thing today. Um, but like I got a head start on it, which was very interesting. And the I started working for growth marketing agencies. Basically, I was working for a bunch of thought leaders, authors, solopreneurs, uh, mid-market companies who all just wanted to answer the question, hey, how do I grow myself online? So that question is incredibly uh, deep and expansive. Uh, and I got to grip my teeth and, and, and work in a lot of different areas of digital marketing. Um, podcasting being one of them. Uh, and I just think that over a period of time, I saw this growing opportunity within this space where like podcasting was getting more and more popular. You could leverage it in many creative ways. And the fact of the matter is, is that someone only has to spend four hours a month to get the, the best benefits possible out of that. So I went off onto basically create services and solutions so uh, leaders are can be enabled to take advantage of the podcast opportunity um, and not have to deal with, you know, many of the common uh, common phrases that come along with podcasting, like, it takes too much time, and I don't know what I'm doing. And um, uh, how can I how can it be proven and stuff like that. So that's how I got my start. And uh, now I sit today with a with an agency that helps businesses grow themselves with podcasting. So let's talk about your system because I know you have a done for you system. You also have done with you, I believe, unless you because you've been growing like all of us, we keep growing and changing and adapting to what works and what doesn't work. Explain how your system works. Yeah, so I'll I'll speak from it from this perspective. So how people engage with us is um, either in two capacities a fully done for you um, environment or a done with you environment. The difference between those two environments is essentially the first environment, the fully done with you is essentially businesses come to me and they're like, Hey, we love everything about this. Like you come incredibly reputable uh, or, you know, uh, 
uh, referred and like, you know, we'd love to do what we're doing. We just don't have the time. We don't want to deal with doing this. We want you to like carry us forward with this. So we just handle everything for our clients. So we manage their podcasts. We produce their podcasts, schedule them. We run the outreach systems for them. We drive prospects into their, their funnels. Um, and we help them grow like, and all they have to do is show up for like four hours a month. Um, that's, our first way that we we do it. The second way is more of a done with you, which is kind of like there are businesses that come to me and they're like, hey, we kind of have a team. We're kind of familiar with this stuff, but we just don't really know how to do it appropriately. Um, and we really, really love your expertise. So I, I built a, uh, an, an engagement where we actually will come into a business. We will build out our operating systems, um, build them into that business as an asset. We will train up a VA or a team member on their side to run that entire system effectively. And then we kind of like sunset out of the business and they kind of grow into the future. Um, so that's more like the built in your business or done with you um, piece of it. Beautiful. And what have your, what have your um, experience has been as you've watched people that have you've worked with? Um, share some examples of the type of people that have been working with you and what their success has been. Yeah, um, there's there's a few examples that come to mind. Um, I mean, let me speak from this. I can give you a lot of examples, but I'd rather talk maybe more just about like the author examples because that's a bit more like relevant. Um, so there's there's a there's quite a few uh, authors or people who are on their thought authority journey that come to me. And they want to take advantage of podcasting. So we basically build them up a show, a whole strategy. We get them going and moving. And I would say the first uh, result that comes through is that we're able uh, incredibly quickly to target and reach ideal customers in very creative and warm ways. And when I say that, what I mean is like we've built outreach systems that can send customized video messages uh, out to ideal prospects. And what we can do is we can funnel those prospects into some sort of funnel for our clients. A lot of the times what that looks like is like we can run these campaigns where we can actually get a bunch of people to apply to be on one show, or we can get you uh, out and apply to be on a lot of other podcasts kind of automatically in the background. Our clients don't have to do anything for that besides literally have one conversation with us. Um, so there's, that's usually kind of like the, a, a one big first, like winning milestone is that like, Oh my God, I have all these, all these interested people and in what I do in the world coming to me, wanting to be on my show. Or it's like, hey, we've, we've been able to contact and reach all these other communities online that would love for you to get in front of their communities. That's one big win that can happen within 30 days. Um, as we start moving down the uh, kind of the, let's say like the, the path or the client journey on our end, the next kind of like milestone that we usually hit is we're literally bringing in ideal prospects to the business. So like we're, they're either collaborating on the show or there's an outreach system uh, or a podcast episode that goes out and people kind of come in through a funnel to take interest in, you know, let's say a client services or consulting or, or, or kind of like whatever it might be. Usually that looks like a booked discovery call. So we're helping people get more booked discovery calls around some, some uh, offer that they have. Um, another milestone kind of after that is, is usually kind of like at that point, like let's say a month or two or a couple months into doing the entire podcasting, uh, is they're starting just to uh, now gain some audience. So like things are naturally starting to now pick up, um, and they're getting watch time. They're getting listen time. They're kind of getting, um, the association, uh, effect, which I which I basically mean to say is that, you know, you build a podcast, you have people on the podcast, you do really great interviews, those people that you have on the podcast become advocates of what you do in the world. And there is this natural gravitational effect of like, sharing that and having more and more advocates in the world. And you kind of, you kind of start to sense that people start paying attention to you, and you might get different opportunities, and you might not have had. So there's like stuff like that that happens um, is uh, as well. So I I would definitely say like, new leads, book discovery calls, interest in one's brand uh, and growth and authority. That's beautiful. You know, there's so, so many times and I have a full range of authors, you know, from just somebody that just wants to get a book out and they, 
the in the conversation is about why you know what is the purpose of this book um because there's so many books being published in today's world that that it will get lost in the cobwebs of cyberspace to the person who is really seriously growing their business and really wants to take care advantage of every opportunity available to them, but it's impossible for them to do all these things by themselves. And that's part of the infrastructure around um, what I'm building on, you know, with my publishing platform is it's way more than a book. The book is that starting point. The book is full of good stuff, good information. It's that that jumping off point, but it takes way more than that to really get the message out to the world. And what's beautiful about the time that we live in, is, as you mentioned at the very start of the conversation, 10 years ago, it wasn't such a thing, you know, but our world has changed so much. And I truly believe that the, the babies being born in our world actually have a device in their hand when they're born, <laughs> You know, because the, our world has changed so much. It, you know, when I was raising my children, we didn't even have a computer. You know, we just didn't have those things. Cell phones were certainly not in in the in the mix at that time. Yeah. And, and how um, incredibly amazing our world is now that we can actually have these conversations like on here and on a podcast and in all the other ways that we can spread our message without actually having to be there in person um, because and we have the whole world as our oyster you know we have the ability to to really touch hearts in huge ways and it's through people like yourself that help take it that extra mile and one of the things that I'm learning is that I can't be all things to all people. I can't do all, you know, those, that's not my area. My area is in the publishing, your areas in bringing the, the, the podcasting as a viable, viable way for them to get their message out to the world and pick up really good clients and, and grow their business in amazing ways. So we have so much at our fingertips now. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. Um, I remember when I was uh, growing up, we, I remember when we got our first computer, but most computers were at like the, the library, right? It's like, <laughs> and I also remember the, like the first, uh, the first, like, I remember like the first, not like cell phone, but like, I remember my dad had like this car phone that he, okay. that he was given. Um, and I remember like playing with that in the, uh, in, in the car. Uh, so yeah, I mean like times have changed so much. I mean, I was born in 93 just to, to have a full disclosure on like my, <laughs> my journey, but like even in the nineties, like it was like, sure. The internet was just getting born, but like, it was not, there was, it wasn't anything right. Like it was not what, what it is, what it is today. So it is kind of funny to look back on like, wow, just in the past 10 years, like even really pretty much like the past 10 years has been like the, the most, the most changes like has ever happened to like the human race, in my opinion. Um, and I think what comes with that is a lot of, uh, confusion around what should I do? How should I do it? Um, but what also comes with that is like immense opportunity because more and more people are coming online every single day. I mean, just if we even look at like the Indian market, if we look at like the, the Indian market in particular, like there are swaths of people every single day that are new internet users coming onto the internet. Right. It's like it's growing. So it's still growing so fast. And even the, in, in even for established um, Internet users, like people like even if they have access to it, like they're not using it or they're not connecting as much as they would. So it's like I think my point in here and that I'm saying is that there's so much opportunity. It's not like anything is uh nothing is like flooded or like there's a lot of information out there but as long as you have a good mission you have a good story like there are many opportunities to connect and and to grow and if you can kind of streamline all that and you work with someone like you yourself that can help people put that message into into story and into a product work with someone like me who can then take that story and product galvanize it into another medium allow you to rinse and repeat it and get in front of other communities and grow your own that's the trick it's amazing. And I really, truly think that um, since COVID, you know, COVID had its many, there's a lot of different ideas about it, a lot of the different thoughts. And yet I think that was the biggest 
leap we've taken because it, it made people stay at home and our connection it forced was change. like the zoom on, on you know on the world some people that was the first time they were ever on zoom you know and look at how it's changed our world um if it had happened if COVID had happened like in the 1990s or or whatever what we would have not been prepared and ready for what what transpired with that and so it in many ways it it really changed our world, but it was a blessing in disguise in the in a whole different way of looking at it <clears throat> as far as what we have available to us today. Sorry. Yeah. Um forced change. Yeah. You know? mm, very much. Well, I can just really pleased um uh, share with people what they need to do to get a hold of you. I know that I will have this showcased on my website. Yeah, and we'll be putting out through our different channels um, because I want people to to really know that there's other steps that they can take to really grow and get that message. Because I think most of us that are working hard to to grow our presence in the world, um, we have to stay focused in our our genius as well. We can't be out there doing everything. We need to find those that can actually help us to move to those steps. And, and and our message is still very, very important. So how do people get a hold of you? And um, what is that one final thought that you would like to express to those that are listening that, that will make a big impact for them? Um, well, you can you can find me anywhere on, on the internet. I'm sure that we have a link here beneath this video or kind of wherever you're sharing it. Um, Getfuturemedia.com or talk to Ike.com or two URLs that you can go to and book a call um, and learn learn more. And if I was passing on uh, any wisdom to to anyone, uh, if you if you know already that you should be doing something, putting yourself out there, creating more content, being consistent, if you already know that you need to be doing it, stop holding yourself back. Um, and I'm happy to talk to anyone on their journey, um, and give them some time so they can make the best decision possible. And maybe that's with me or it's not with me, it, it, but at the end of the day, as long as someone's making the best choice for themselves, that's, that's what I want. So if you are that type of person that, you know, that you should be doing this thing and this thing that you want to do, don't hold yourself back, take some steps forward, get some more information and figure out, um, how, you know, your path will start to unfold in front of you. I was someone who. And I, I will say from this perspective, um, I had one or two opportunities when I was very young to make a decision to like fully commit to like creating content in the early days of YouTube and in the early days of Instagram. And this was when like I was 18 years old, let's say. And I remember like having such a difficult time, like fully committing to creating. And a lot of it was because I didn't know how to do it. And I didn't have like resources or people to talk to. It was such early days. Um, I, I'm not a resentful, I'm not like a regretful person, let's say. But I think back on those days, I've been like, wow, like, man, I really wish I had someone to talk to there was there was no one to, there was no one to talk to then it was like no one was an expert in it it was just a thing so if my pat my words of wisdom if there's any wisdom in them to anyone thinking about it like literally just have a conversation with someone get some more information so you can make the best decision possible awesome very good well we all learn as we move along the way and here we are i'm sorry i've got a little tickle in my throat um so for anybody listening, it's talktoike.com or getfuturemedia.com. <coughs> Sorry, I have a cough. Um, but take advantage of what, what Ike has to offer. And we are happy that you listened to this recording today and this podcast and reach out to Ike. Thank you. Thank you.